Good morning, folks. The Earth-facing quiet has had fun watching the sunspots and solar flares try to make a run, but the dominance of that phenomena prevails today as we come directly to spaceweathernews.com and find a much calmer 24 hours of our star, no ejecta, no bright flashes, and even the small pops and surface surges aren't making an appearance here. We'll come back to the calm up there in just a moment, but first, we're calm at Earth as well. Technically, we're in the midst of a coronal hole solar wind stream, but it's a very weak one, and geomagnetism is doing A-OK. -okay. Back up to the sun, solar flaring has dropped off, the Earth-facing quiet had seen about enough. We've got two sunspots of note on the disk, with the departing group mostly responsible for that tiny flaring uptick of the last three days, but he's on his way out, with the slightest chance for magnetic mixing at the secondary trailing umbras growing at the 10 o'clock position of the incoming group. You can see that here. Tiny spots out ahead in the 1 and 2 o'clock positions faded and disappeared, while the other side now gives it a shot back there. The planets are working for an uptick as well. Venus coming in to slowly conjoin, but around to the midnight side, things are happening even faster. The full moon in a couple of days is going to conjoin Mars and Saturn, which are entering their geocentric solar opposition positions. Something to note, as the trio of sunspots departed the disk two days ago, we saw the sunspot number drop off but not our coverage app score, based on size, not number. And it is plateauing at the same time the coronal hole's transequatorial portion begins to face Earth. The score is peaking today, so our quake watch maximum goes from now until the 19th. We can look ahead to the next one and know that it will be moderate. As it stands, the most interesting story beneath our feet is a solid seismic swarm taking place beneath Mount Hood. The volcano is alive and so locals are concerned there could be stronger activity there soon. Top link today is this, satellite derived vertical motion over time in New Orleans. One imagines this has to be speeding up because this level of drop would have put them way under by now. Try the math over time on 10, 20, 30 millimeters per year. Folks, that is just north of me in Santa Fe. The lows dropped a nice amount of hail on them in a burst to end the weekend, but today those systems are moving on, driving the rainfall where they do not want to see it anymore. Texas. There is an absurd story unfolding in Bangladesh where lightning strikes are surging in the region due to increased population, crowding, deforestation, and not to mention stronger storms lashing the whole planet. Twin cyclones in the Indian Ocean, with the northern one sending its moisture up there to the land, with more southern lows reaching up at New Zealand and Tasmania there as well. Flooding in Sri Lanka is displacing thousands of people and has already turned deadly. You can see the weather motions across much of the south here, including to the left a strong South Atlantic storm drawing convergence and rain potential back at the South American coastlines. Across the pond, it's a bit lighter of a day in general, but some isolated events could become serious. Check your forecasts. Folks, there are more experiments posted from our electricity and plasma workshop. Members at suspiciousobservers.org, head over to Premium and check out the latest from Yelverton's lab. We've got shots of our star to close. It's 4 a.m. in Albuquerque, and that's the news. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.